the world that we live in is in fact the shadow of the Almighty. Hello everyone, how are you doing? My name is Charlie, I am a non-binary sci-fi fantasy writer, and I've been practicing Christian spirituality for over 20 years. And today, I want to talk to you about the Zel Shaddai, the Shadow of the Almighty. Because the world that we live in, the very world that we call home, is in fact the Shadow of the Almighty. It is the Shadow of God. And this has ramifications in a lot of different ways, both for our theology, for our practice, and for our understanding of ourselves and how we interact with this world. There's a beautiful meditation that helps us to see this, where you sit and you imagine a brilliant light source surrounding you, shining all around you, and figures come in and move, and in between, where those shadows overlap, that creates this kind of holographic image of the things in front of you. And that's an interesting way of visualizing this idea. You see, the world itself, if we are to believe the sages and saints, began when God decided to create the universe. So God constricted into himself one, two, three times from the Ein to the Ein Sof to the Ein Sof Ur, from the limitless to the limitless nothing to the infinite light. This constriction was to make a space in the cosmos that could be filled with a new creation. And that creation is us. This is what we see in the first chapter of Genesis when we see that the world was tohu and vohu. The world was empty and without form. This is the space that was carved out for our world to come into being. And the Spirit of God hovered above the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And if we listen to the Gospel of John and the light, shone into the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. This light from the outer edges of God shone into the waters of creation, into this realm where all that we behold in the vastness of space and made everything that we are. Now again, if you want to go into this into a lot more detail, see my video about truth, but this could be seen literally as the Big Bang, that moment where all the energy of creation thundered into the world. But the mystics tell us that creation didn't stop there, and this light of God is constantly flowing into the world. And it's that light of God that animates, that creates, and that breaks down. It is that light of God that makes everything that is. This is the Zel Shaddai, the shadow of the Almighty. This world, this desk, this chair, this room, the material that makes up my body, all of this is the shadow of God. And as such, the light of God can manipulate it, can change it, can restore it, can tear it down. This is the very thing that is manipulated through magic, through prayer, through praise. This is the power of Dabar, the spoken, enacted word that gives rise to all things. It's why we say our rituals out loud. It's why we say our prayers out loud. The spoken, enacted word has power, because in so doing, we are casting more shadows into this shadow and changing its structure, changing how the light bends and shapes everything that is here. And it's fundamental, at least to the school of thought that I have been operating in for a very long time, to understand this basic tenet, because so many people think that what they are doing is trying to force God to make changes, right? You beg, you plead to the Almighty so that a thing either will happen or won't happen. Or you become a wizard and you wave your magic wand and huzzah, force change onto the universe. That is not how any of this works. See, the universe is a sea of probabilities. It is a sea of possibilities that could or could not happen. Our words, our actions, our deeds... The light of God that moves through the world, the grace of God, the darkness of God, all of these things affect how those probabilities sort themselves out. So when we are putting our intentions into the world, when we're putting our prayers into the world, when we're doing our rituals, our prayers, our workings, we are, in fact, 
trying to push the odds into our favor. That's what these things do. There's a lot of light and a lot of darkness constantly showering into this world from all sides. I'm putting it out into the world. My husband is putting it out into the world. Our neighbors are putting it out into the world. It's constantly around us. And that doesn't even get into any of the incorporeal entities that are around us. Understanding that what we are doing is adjusting the odds, nudging the odds to be more in our favor, to have a more favorable out. You will be much more effective in the workings that you do. You will find much more fulfillment in the work because you will not be seeing the world as some divine candy machine where you insert your one prayer token, you turn the wheel, and the candy comes out. Because that's not how any of this works. We are shining our light. Other things are shining their light. Other things are casting shadows. And all of that falls into this realm that we call home. Into the Zel Shaddai, into the shadow of the Almighty, and changes the results of how things work. So yes, it is possible, in theory, to move mountains and to do all the great works that we read of in legend, but all of the energies have to align just right for those miracles to occur. More often than not, we are cleansing and purifying the energy around us so that the light of God can shine strong in the world that we live in, the little bit that we inhabit. Don't lose sight. Too many people get lost in the analogies that are used for magic and the various mystical arts. We are not here to remove all darkness, because darkness is the via negativa, the way of silence, the one of the aspects we encounter of God. The light is also an aspect of God. And learning to see both of those in the world, and learning how to work with both of those in this world is vital. So this is where naming comes in. And we'll talk about this more in a future video on the word. But this is where names come into effect, because names help us understand the world as we are interacting with it. So let us begin with the world as it is, the Zel Shaddai, the shadow of God. I hope you found this helpful. I hope that this has opened your eyes to some things. I think that a lot of what I'm talking about when, when put together will make a lot more sense, but we need to talk about each one in discrete parts. So the whole will eventually come together and make a sum that's greater than its parts. If you have any questions, please don't forget to put them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and channel. It really helps out a lot. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Creations Paths in both of those places as well. And until next time, may the light of God ever shine upon you and the Shekinah ever guard you in, under her wings, that she may guide and guard you all the days of your life. Amen. Amen.